Welcome to the March 1st, 2018 episode of Reactive Consciousness, our in-depth podcast about what happened this week in our lives. I am your host, Vise the Bold, and this is... Lotus Prince. And Recologist. Hello, everyone. Oh, man, back again. It, it, it's kind of like we 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 record these on, on the same day or something. You know, you know what the worst thing is? A magician revealing a secret. The second worst is what you just did. A podcast revealing a secret. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what goes into the sausage. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> People, don't worry. I'm just a voice in this advisor's head. Mm. That is true. Yeah, is a, a, like an ethereal being. Or yeah, possibly an imagination. He, 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 he is both here for uh, Lotus and myself as our imaginary best friend. Like We believe in, in him so well that you can hear him. It, yes. It's like, it's but, Afro Samurai. Here. Yes, like, but I do want to say, <laughs> to say that that those are fun of wise. Do not worry, his health is alright because I'm also the imaginary voice of the Croc as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nice. Uh, so... Um, <sighs> We wanted to um, react here. Um, this is this is something that uh, Lotus was was uh, definitely had a um, a strong feeling about here. So I mean, lots um, of people did, but yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, this is coming off of uh, I, I I think the EA controversy, uh, which kind of kick started this all with Battlefront Two. Yeah, um, with with the EA thing, people were getting furious uh, about loot boxes and pay to unlock stuff in the game instead of endlessly grinding for it. Uh, what I have here is a situation that is similar, but not the same. So, very recently, a kind of, like, part of it was very hyped and part of it was, like, I don't know, just sort of, like, backlash on principle, but uh, Metal Gear Survive which is a, a Metal Gear game where you deal with zombies because every every franchise has got to have zombies at some point and Metal Gear finally has its turn now, I guess. So a lot of people are looking forward to it because, I mean, why wouldn't they? It's a new Metal Gear game. But a lot of people are kind of mad about it because Kojima has already left Konami and Kojima is kind of the face of the Metal Gear Solid and, well, the Metal Gear universe. So, like, let's see, like... There have been Metal Gear games without Kojima's input before, like like Acid and stuff like that. Sure. But now he's out of the company, so let's see what happens when he's not even around and Konami makes a Metal Gear game. So I cannot speak much about the gameplay or the story or whatever. I haven't played it. From what I heard, it's anywhere from like it, like mediocre to like it's just kind of like whatever. It's nothing really to write home about. Like it's a Metal Gear game, I guess. But what um what I am here to talk about though is um like Vice said uh, this is kind of like a controversy um that I guess what kickstarts it is on EA's level but we haven't gotten any incredibly stupid response from Konami yet like what really got people mad about EA oh I would was... very much doubt if they they would even respond I, to no, I was gonna say if they know what to do then they'll keep their mouth shut but um when um. Like EA's big mistake was saying was doubling down on why grinding for many hours per to unlock a single character in a grindy game is a good thing, and that got people furious. Like they were pissed off at the feature, but then when EA said something stupid, they got livid. Konami has not said anything stupid, but they have stupid features. So we're at that level, like le level one. Like just wait for the thing to explode. Like if you go to Konami's uh, Twitter and you look for their their post about like the Metal Gear Survives US release date like it just came out in the US like every single comment there is just like mad <laughs> um so Metal Gear Survive is a I think it's a $40 game not a yes, $60 it's one it's not a full it's not a full mm -hmm. price game it's a $40 yeah. game so that's something but what what's gotten people really mad though is uh well number 1 like Metal Gear has had microtransactions before like in Metal Gear Solid Online and stuff like that. Yeah, but most of it's like cosmetic, which is pretty normal. Yeah, not but like but even so though, lately there has been more of an audible distaste for microtransactions just anyway. Like um like like now now that people are really starting to talk about it, it's like I don't think I like microtransactions. But what got people really mad about Metal Gear Survives microtransactions is um there's cosmetic stuff. So there's that. 
But there's also stuff that you would find in like a mobile game, stuff that helps to like boost your EXP, so it arguably becomes pay to win at that point. It's like, are you sure that you made a good game if you're selling me the chance to bypass playing it, you know? Yeah. Um, but the, the stuff that really got people mad is um, if you play something like Call of Duty, and if you play it a lot, then when you go to multiplayer maps, you'll find that you can save particular sets of weapons to equip yourself with and whatever perks. So you're like, you know what? I think I'm, I'm more feeling this character loadout right now. And you could select that one. Uh, so you have four loadouts of Metal Gear Survive and you could pay for more. And that's like, that just sounds like a, like pieces of the game were cut out and you could pay to restore yeah, them. That's I'm, so stupid. I'm not happy about that, but that's like that I would imagine is what people are mad about on principle, but the thing that people are very obviously mad about, like very vocally so, is that the game has exactly one save slot. So like there are some games that do this. Like um I got you know, like 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 the original Pokemon on the Game Boy like, you, you couldn't have two save slots. If you wanted to start a new game, then you gotta delete your old save yeah, slot. Yeah, but that was because of, a, like, a technical limitation. Yeah, it's because it was the fucking limitation. Game Boy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, this is the case for Metal Gear Survive. But, there's good news. There is not only one save slot. I think there are up to four. But you can pay about $10 for each. So, paying for save slots is something that I don't that's think ridiculous. I've ever heard about in my life. Yeah, no, that's ridiculous. Oh, so my like, goodness. How much of a... F- like, just how much of a fuck-up are you? Like, like I saw a Facebook meme already. It didn't take long. Or maybe it was a Twitter meme. Whatever. It was some social media meme where someone um, had that, like, EA is having microtransactions and making us pay thousands of dollars or grind for, like, hundreds of hours to unlock stuff. Boy, are we mad. And then it's like, Konami, hold my beer. And it's like charging for fucking save slots in a video game. Like, again, this isn't cosmetic. This isn't even pay to win. Pay to win is some bullshit, but the reason we allow it to happen is that they're typically attached to mobile games that are, like, free. And, like, they yeah. gotta they gotta get their money somehow. Pay to win really sours the multiplayer experience, but if it's single player, then eh, the company's gotta make their money somehow. But, like, to take a standard like retail release like mainstream retail release on console and on pc and remove a feature like this is what ea did with dungeon keeper they took elements of gameplay or they took a feature and they limited it a lot and then allowed the player to pay to undo the damage they did so here it's not like there already was a metal gear survive and konami came in and took away save slots and they made players pay for it but they're fucking save slots. Like, this is how the game came out. They're like, you could have four, but we'll only give you one. And it's just like, Konami, like, people already hated you for, like, running all of your franchises into the ground. And this is not winning you any points back. Like, what do you? What did you think was going to happen the moment player number one turned on the game and went to the online store and saw what was available? Like, a fucking save slot? Like, that would, I would think I read it wrong. Like, a save slot. And then I would go back to my game, and I'd be like, well, there is only one save slot. Like, what the hell? Like, what is that? Like, who does that? To be and honest, those... to be honest, what? we're talking about Metal Gear, Metal Gear Survive. You need only one save slot, I think. No, I know. No, I mean, yeah, to beat the game, you only need one. No, but that... I mean, like... <laughs> uh, like, I'm just saying that it's not a good game. <laughs> Yeah, for yeah, from what I, again, I can't really speak to this other than a brief review I've seen. But from what I've heard, it's a mediocre game anyway. So yeah, but like if you and your sibling or something wants to make separate files, that'll be an extra ten dollars. But what kills me is that it's not even like I've seen games do this where the game is thirty or forty dollars, and then the DLC brings it up to sixty, and it's like wink. But if you wanted to buy all four safe slots, and again, to be fair, I don't know why you would. But on principle, you shouldn't have to. That would bring it up to seventy dollars. Again, save slots. Like that's that's just such a like I've seen people post on Facebook like, oh well, that's what pure capitalism is. But like, in capitalism, you're trying to make money. Like making a dollar now and then preventing any future business from ever happening is not pure capitalism. That's just like an idiot manager. Like 
proper capitalism yeah. would be w- making the customers want to come back and keep buying your shit. Like, it, like probably the most classic example is if like, you know, a car mechanic rips you off, and like, well, they they got you by the balls now, so I guess you're gonna have to suck up that usurious fee. But like. I'll shop somewhere else from now on. You got my money now, but now I'm going to spread the word about you. And, like, how did Konami think that it would go anywhere but this direction for something like this or Metal Gear Survive? Like, who is going to genuinely be okay with this or, like, even approve of it? It's like paying for... I'm repeating myself, but paying for save slots. Like, who thought this was a genuinely good idea? Oh, I'm sure the players are going to buy those in droves and and this game will be popular. Like, what? (laughs) Well, you I doubt what? they did. It was probably so. It was probably like one or two guys, like higher ups. The game, the people making the game, were probably like, "This is a dumb fucking decision." Like it, it's like Battlefront Two. People worked so hard on that game. Like I really feel bad for the developers because the game is all right and it looks gorgeous. But then and it some, has a lot of modes and other yeah, things to it. it had like a lot I mean, of love put into not it. not anywhere near as much as the PS Two game, which is another problem people had. But aside from that, like people really put effort into making that game <clears throat> and then some jackass is like hey let's make the game like a chore and charge people to make it not a chore like you know the programmers didn't want that like they're just making a fucking video game like same goes around your survive what if you crossed off three of those save slots and charged 10 bucks for it on whatever online place like you know that was some idiot like manager's decision here here's the thing um, and I, I, I think that this is this is a, um, an even greater concern. Um, they don't have a, a business analyst telling them, yo, this is um, a feature that will have a, a, a decent reaction to charging more. They don't have a business analyst telling them, hey, this is what sells with other games that are successful online. Um, so, like... You know what this reeks of to me? It reeks of when when they were trying to figure out DLC in the very beginning, and mm. we're way past that. We're 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 over ten years now. Um, what the horse armor was the first DLC, right? Um, and the funny thing is, we don't even care. <laughs> the funny thing about horse armor is that like that's the like that that got people so mad because it was like however many dollars for horse armor, which like everyone got mad because it doesn't even do anything. But the funny irony is that. That's actually the DLC we like. Well, not not DLC, Think but we're if okay it, with it. Yeah, if it were, yeah. Mi- yeah, not not DLC, but microtransactions. That's the kind we're particularly okay with because it doesn't unbalance the game. Yeah, like okay. So uh, what what I what I was gonna say here is that um, what it reeks of to me is when EA said, "Okay, we're gonna give you cheat codes, but you have to buy them." Um, like yeah, it, it, you cannot take an obvious feature that was supposed to be in the game to begin with and sell that as DLC. That is not something you could do. You can you could sell us um you know a significant portion of the game that should uh that was added, you know, to well, that, that's, it, that's like a side thing. story. Um you yeah, know you could do I, that. I, yeah, yeah, I was going to mention I'm okay Shuffle with that. Yeah, I was going to mention Shuffle Knight or like I mentioned in this week's Corrective Consciousness Little Nightmares. Like they didn't have the game and they're like, "Let's hide part of it away." Like they were still making the DLC and then when they were finished, they're like, "You want more of the game that you don't need to understand the base game?" Like with Shovel Knight, you want to play as Spectre Knight, and it's a completely different story that Here, does not you, help the main story at all. It's just his own thing. Sure, fine. And that here's was the free, great by thing the about way. yeah. Here's the great thing about that. Uh, what what um, the Shovel Knight guys are are doing is they're using their DLC as a reason for you for people to pick up a uh, the game that have never picked it up before. Um, people that bought it way back when are getting all this stuff for free. Um, and it's it's major updates. It's like 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 a huge amount of content has been added to that game over time. Yeah, um, it's it's both a reward for buying the game, but also as Vice said, an excuse to buy it. If you see now, it has all this stuff, and it still just costs the base price. So so that is an extreme way to do DLC right. I mean, they 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 know that if they keep coming out with uh, awesome content and 
Uh, like, it, it's giving people more and more of an excuse to buy. See, I, I think it's okay for them to charge for that content. I'm going to be, you know, that guy that says, you know what, um, you know what, I, I would have paid fi uh, five bucks or ten bucks for what they did there. I would have been okay with that. Well, no, I, actually, I, I would even argue, I would almost encourage them to charge a little for it because most yeah. most developers can't do what the Shovel Knight people got away with. Like, it, it just so happened that Shovel Knight sold like hotcakes and they made like a bajillion dollars like immediately because it was just that yeah. great of a game so they're able to get away with just giving away significant dlc normally like little nightmares is like a 20 dollar game and there are three dlc episodes and they're five bucks each if you want them it's like here's a little extra you know like that that's what i would expect normally yeah so i i, I would say that um the the value of the things that they're giving us is way over what they what they're what they're charging. So, um, but uh, which, which I I think they're also doing the thing where they are uh, asking more for the game than they ever used to. Mm -hmm. Um, so because you're buying a bigger game than what had originally been released. Sure. Um, but I I I might be incorrect in thinking that. But I I just bought another copy of the game. Um, I ended up picking up um the the Switch version of the game. Because I, I would I would actually say that that's probably the definitive version of the game. Um, not only does it have the amiibo support of the Wii U version, I was ask about that. Yeah. Uh, it has like the co-op uh, of of the Wii U version of the game, but you can play it portable, uh, just like you can with the DS version. So, um, yeah, that's true because the vanilla version didn't really have any. Like it was the the nature of the system itself rather than a feature in the game. Exactly. Um, so I, I'm okay with with. Um, getting si significant DLC. I'm also okay with extra characters. Like I'm okay with, with um, um, you know, uh, extra characters to play as. Maybe not in a fighting game. I think that's. Well, it, I, I, I was I was gonna say if they really came up with it later, like Super Smash Brothers, like yes. oh, eventually they put in Cloud and Bayonetta. But what I don't like is Killer Instinct, where, to be oh, fair, yeah. they made the base game way cheaper as a result, and you basically had to pay your way to the full game, but, like, have, yeah, like, having, like, a roster of, like, fucking two or four characters or whatever yeah. in a Killer Instinct game, and then pay for everyone else, like, that just leaves a bit... Again, even though the pricing kind of made sense, it's like, just charge fucking $60 for a fighting game. It, yeah. yeah, no, it was annoying that the way the way they, they, they did that, for sure. Um... I, I, I don't mind buying extra characters if they came out later. I don't mind that. Um, I, I mind buying them from the beginning. That's stupid. But Yeah, uh, like, ugh. my way, if, like, again, not all games do this. I can't promise this every time. But my strategy, at least with stuff like Mortal Kombat and, like, I don't actually own the Injustice games, but if I did, my buy strategy... Buy them when they're complete, right? Yeah, buy, yeah, wait for, like, the super... Like, on Resident Evil 5, 6, and 7, I, like... I just wait for the gold edition, which, by the way, is cheaper than even the base game, let alone the base game plus all the DLC. I think I mentioned this on a video of mine uh, just on, like, my, my YouTube channel. Just, like, I, I, I still haven't even bought Resident Evil 7. But, like, yeah. Resident Evil 7 was... Me either. Resident Evil 7 was, you know, $60. Surprise, it's a AAA mainstream title. But then there was a bunch of DLC, so I... If you bought, like, this, the complete edition on day one, like, the season pass or whatever, it was, like, 80 or $90, but now the gold edition is 50 and that's now. It's 40 like, actually, now. It's, 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 it's already it. gone down then, so this is what I was yeah. talking about. I was going to say, and it's going to go down. So, like, yeah, like, would, would I rather play the game now for twice the price, or, like, I know damn well I'm not playing it for a while. I don't even know when I'm going to play Resident Evil 7, so I can wait. And but so I, far, it's already paying off. That, that That's a great strategy and all, but uh, I'm okay with paying paying for extra content in that way i'm i'm okay with 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 also cosmetic things um because like that that's to your taste and not only that but you don't need to buy all of it right like like if you yeah. bought every single item in in like the the dead or alive five final round i was thinking bought, that that is it, endless it, it's something like three thousand dollars they don't want you to buy it all i uh, like yes they it's, do it's no, yeah, I'm sure they wouldn't mind, but they don't expect all. anyone to do it. Nobody's going to buy it all unless it's some teenager who got a hold of their parents' credit card and doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah, um, you or know, does like, know what they're doing. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> you, you know, like, the, 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 there's going to be some heavy users, of course. There's going to be some extreme cases. Yeah, there's always but they're, that they're, guy. They're, they're way out of the... Um, 
they're they're way out of the the norm and and not the intention. So they, what they intend for people to do, the average buyer of things, is to buy something like ten dollars worth of worth of costumes, probably. They, they think that the average person who does buy DLC will buy ten dollars worth of stuff, right? Yeah, like so, and, and again, you could do this any way you want. Like, there's that one costume for that one character because it looks cool. Or yeah. you could do, like, that one set of costumes for that one set of characters or something like that. And and, and I'm okay with, with that. I'm okay with that kind of DLC. I am, I'm more than okay with it because that, that's also, like, a personal preference thing. You might not like everything that comes out. Um, you might only want, you know, certain, certain uh, characters. You might only have a couple favorites. I'm okay with all that stuff. Um... What I'm not okay with is an obvious stupid feature that should be in a game it is locked behind a paywall. Like, yeah. why Why is the options menu locked behind a paywall, you know? Like, yeah. what, what, why is controller support locked behind a paywall? Like, you know, like, what, what, are you, what are you doing? Like, this is not something people want to pay for or will take that well. Like, if you wanted to charge us 50 bucks for the game to have all the features, charge me 50 bucks rather than the 40 bucks. Like, you know, what do you... Their business analysts are completely tone deaf. Completely tone deaf to the way the marketplace works and the way that communities will respond to these kinds of things. People are okay with DLC now. They are, by and large, people are okay with DLC. You have some extreme people that are that will piss and moan that things aren't all on the disc when you get it. But there, the mainstream player knows that well, most games will well, yeah, have the, DLC the, come out. Yeah, the, the, okay. the, the ideal way is if it's like, did you like that game? Cool. Well, guess what? Now you have an opportunity to get more of it. Like, well, yeah, like that, that, that's, like, that's a good thing. By general, yeah, it's an yeah. afterthought. Like yeah. extra content. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, like again, like the Shuffle Knight stuff. Like, what if we did a game on Plague Knight? Like, oh shit, really? Like, yeah. Well, they Here, never you... intended to add that stuff. They, that that stuff was like added. Yeah. They they added that once they found out how popular the game. Yeah, was. Yeah, exactly. Know? Like, 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 so now you now you can go no back way, to that yeah. game you love and play it more. Exactly. I I mean, that that's. That's the best scenario, of course, and I I, I realize that's not going to happen all the time. Most games are 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 conceived of with with DLC in mind, and that's okay. I'm okay with it. You know, it's a it's a reality of gaming in the modern era. But they do most games give you a full experience without it, like almost all of them, yeah. almost all of them. I mean, it. Let, let, I'll give it for instance. Horizon Zero Dawn has a a significant. Um, uh, DLC chapter. However, if it wasn't there, it wouldn't it wouldn't matter. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it's there if you want more game. Uh, for instance, uh, the the Zelda uh, DLC. I played the hell out of Breath of the Wild, and I bought the DLC, but I haven't even played the DLC, and I I got a hell of an experience out of the base game. So I only bought the DLC because like I love the game that much that I kind of want everything to do with it. Mm-hmm. But uh, and I'll I'll play it eventually. Maybe if I play the game a second time, I'll 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 you know delve into the DLC that kind of thing. But I, I mean, and by the way, I will say right there that is one reason I wait for the complete edition or at least for the DLC. So to you come don't have out. to replay the game, yeah? Yeah, like mm-hmm. I beat the game and it was hard. And now like next year, now that I've played like five other games, when I go back to that game that you're out of practice in and there's a hard level because. Yeah, they expect you to have already been good at it. It's like not. I've I've used this example before, but to this day, I have still not played the Burial at Sea DLCs for Bioshock Infinite. Me I either. love Bioshock Infinite, and I played it years ago. But I don't know if I'll ever play Burial at Sea because like, it just came out way later, and like I don't want to go back to that. Like I beat it, I had fun with it. Yeah, and that you know what? Um, I I'm kind of the same way. I mean, I I I've beaten every bit of um of every bioshock game except for the burial c expansions because uh when i played two two already had the dlc out when i played yeah. it um and like and the reason and i, I played it right the, after and the reason by the way i i, I realized that i said in corrective consciousness that mr ryu and i went back to little nightmares but that's like it's like limbo or inside that is a really easy game to pick up and play 
Like, well, it's not, not only... like, oh, do you remember this specific detail from the base game? Like, it's irrelevant. And it's a side story besides. Uh, well, not only that, <clears throat> but, like, it also didn't come out all that long after the base game. It really didn't. No, the base game was, I think, 2017. And the DLC came out... Like, episode one came out, like, last year. I think but I think actually both episodes might have come out mm-hmm. last year. I just chose to wait. Like, they, they were there pretty soon after. It was only episode three that came out on February 23rd. And that was when I was like, okay, let's do all three of them. Because I, I really I, didn't want to play one and then wait months and then play for another hour and then wait months. It's like, yeah, give me all three. For, for this example, I usually bring up the fact that, um, like... I, I have so many games and so much going on that uh, it takes me a lot of time, a, uh, a, a lot of times, a long time to catch up and play a game. That is unless there's an exception where I have a game that just like I, I, I have to play, yeah. which was Breath of the Wild. I, I stopped everything I was doing when I, when I bought that game and, and was addicted to it for a while uh, in, until I beat it. Um, it was the same way with Mass Effect um, 3. When Mass Effect 3 came out, I was high on, you know, Mass Effect 2. <laughs> but then you beat it. <laughs> well, I beat it. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you know, <laughs> haha on that. But um, yeah, yeah. I also, when I beat it, all of the DLC wasn't out. And some of the DLC yeah. was actually, like, really good. And, um, like, the, uh, particularly, like, the last one that they, they released was a really good code of the series. And I never played it because, like, I didn't feel like like going back into the game and going to an old save before. Uh, yeah, that's I beat what's the game. frustrating. Yeah, it's time yeah. sensitive DLC. Like, it's at this point in the story. Like Deus Ex's DLC, for example. Yeah. To be fair, that that was actually downloaded as a separate game when it first came out. Now sure, you can buy the sure. director's cover. It was a standalone. Yeah. yeah, but like you could play it whenever you want. It was just kind of a little weird because you could tell where in the story it was supposed to be. But what's frustrating is when the DLC is actually integrated into the main game, but like you miss the part where you trigger it. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of rare, but that's a real dick move. Uh, that's what that's one thing I like about Dark Souls' DLC is that you can go find it whenever you want. Yeah. Or, or if you know how to find it. <laughs> yeah, if, yeah, major if. Like, get a guide, good lord. Go look up the Wikipedia page. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So, I, 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 like, once again, this is, like, a bonehead manager move. Like, like somebody high up has a job that they shouldn't have. Uh, and yeah. they, they are not listening to their people. They're not listening. Like, cause, like, Metal Gear Survive is the kind of game where you can have all kinds of cosmetic stuff and people would buy it, you know? People would buy all kinds of goofy, like, Konami-related stuff. Um, yeah, like like, like Like I do in Bomberman. Like, I, I love having those, like, you know... Oh, the Switch Bomberman? Yeah, yeah. Like, like yeah, that's, that's DLC done, right? Like, it doesn't... Yeah. Like, you could play as Pyramid Head Bomberman. You could play as Gradius Bomberman. What was the third one? Uh, Simon Belmont. Thank yeah. you. Simon Belmont Bomberman. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they they added more stuff recently, too. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, so that game must be doing really well, because uh, they, they, they've they kept up with the DLC. Yeah, you know, like, it's a, the game's a year old now. So, yeah. like, like that's unusual for a Bomberman game. Like to have and, and again, that's character that DLC, stuff. but those clearly came out later, and they don't matter for, like, no. being good at the game or whatever. And you can buy them in the with the in-game currency, too. Like, you don't yeah, have really to buy cool. them with, uh, with, like, you know, bought currency. But anyway, um, I, you know, I, I, I just think that the, they are completely tone deaf, which I completely believe if they, you know, were were treating their workers like they did and all, all, all the controversies about them. Yeah, EA apparently sucks to work for, but Konami apparently really, really sucks to work for. Yeah, at least nah. at least Japan's branch. I don't know about America's branch. If they I'm have sure one, America's like, fine, but yeah. Maybe, because maybe, America's EA is not fine, but like Japan's yeah, Konami yeah, is just so like, whoa. Fair a few very dodgy things. Like, are you sure we come from the same country that this has a work, high work ethics? Sure, <laughs> yeah. sure. But like the the people there that that are in in the country where that's like the norm are like no you don't want to go well, yeah there. That, that's the that's the yeah. thing it's not like oh Japan just has different standards than we do like no apparently Konami just sucks to work for yeah, yeah. bring your own PC so, to work yeah. yeah so anyway um I I did want to move on to a second topic here um 
I, I did want to go over um, uh, some of the retro gaming uh, additions that I've had in, in recent days, and also wanted to talk about a couple things. Now, um, last Reactive, we talked about uh, um, your GameCube edition uh, of your, the Yeah, HDMI. I mentioned it briefly. Yeah, yeah. I, got, I got like an external piece that attaches to the video out where you would normally put in composite or, if you're lucky, component cables. But my thing has a conversion to HDMI, so I can hook up the GameCube to uh, an HDTV just directly with an HDMI. So, uh, Vice, you had mentioned, I believe in Corrective, uh, the the Wii U plays Wii games, and it does HDMI out. And if you have a GameCube mod with HDMI, or even the component cables, then that kind of renders the Wii itself sort of irrelevant. So that can... You know, allow me to play GameCube and Wii games with HDMI. So yeah, I I I've been looking to um, getting an HDMI solution for my GameCube. There are a lot of them going around right now. Yeah. Um, and I, I think they're all based off of one guy's um, firmware. Um, okay. That that uh, he he released it as open source. So like basically anybody could sell his uh, his work. Um, okay. as long as they give him credit. So, like, uh, there are a lot of different solutions coming out, like, that use his firmware that converts um, that uh, digital signal to an HDMI signal from the back of the GameCube. Now, I, I think that that's pretty cool, but uh, I'm kind of waiting for... Uh, um, apparently, uh, there there's a um, badass console version is coming out very soon, and I kind of want to... Uh, check that out personally. I mean, the goal here is to to make all of the old systems HDMI. Uh, that that's my goal. Uh, I really want that, and uh, I've been wanting to get um, uh, one for my Famicom, but like apparently uh, they're lagging behind on that. But I I recently got in the mail my N sixty four HDMI upgrade kit. So I'm I'm very happy that that finally came in. I've been waiting for that for like a year. Um, Do you have to solder that in? Or you just... Yes, it is a very extensive mod. It is a mod that you cannot Ooh, do unless you're nice. good. Uh, so I am definitely going to hire somebody to do it. Uh, but there are a few trusted modders for it. Uh, so I, I will, will be reaching out to yeah. um, a, a trusted modder for it. Um, there, there's actually one in New Jersey from the website that sells it. Um, I may, I may check with them. Apparently there's a guy named Voltar that is, uh, very trusted in the community that is also doing it. So I'll, I'll send an email to see whether I could get somebody to do it. Um, uh, but, uh, I'm, I'm excited because this really does clean up a lot of the things that I hate about the N64. Um, the N64, a lot of my hatred towards the N64 is not because of the games. In fact, I think the games redeem it. Um, but I, I, I hate the hardware itself. I think it's crap. Um, uh, it, it just doesn't have good frame rate. It didn't have, um, uh, you know, it doesn't have good sound. <laughs> it doesn't have, um, like, it, it has a blurry filter applied to everything. It has anti-aliasing uh, when it it shouldn't have anti-aliasing like you have anti-aliasing now because you have high resolution when you have low resolution it makes it look like crap um so like it, it's it's just uh i think it was a system that like could have used some more time baking uh and they they didn't think it all the way through um and i i don't, I don't think the cartridge medium was very good either during the time but the, the games are great i mean uh you know some of the best games of all time came from that system you know like ocarina of time is one, one of my favorite games uh you know majora's mask um mario 64 uh, hybrid heaven um <laughs> yeah the best game ever made yeah. <laughs> is it i always thought that was i have no idea <laughs> no but i'm i'm just referencing our, our our previous episode here but um uh you know like there, there's plenty of, of of stuff you could pick up on the on the system and have a lot of fun with but um i, I don't like the controller at all <laughs> i think the n64 controller is stupid but you know that's just me but um i i can't wait for that to get up uh updated and um i can't wait to see if I can come up with a solution for my Famicom and get get that upgraded. 
Uh, I also kind of wanted to take a moment to talk about some joystick stuff that I w I, I've been contemplating. I have a um, a, um, a a joystick, uh, a, a Comba Obsidian for the PS4 and PS3. And is it um, a joystick I, or a joypad or a controller? No, it's a joystick. It, it's like an arcade joystick. Huh. Um, and it has Samwa parts in it, and I. Uh, apparently, there are uh, a couple things I could do to it to make it better for shmups. Usually, um, the way that it, um, they're released, they're they're for um, fight uh, fighting players, fight, fighting game players, which makes sense. the The fighting game community is really the um, the the supporter of of joysticks the most. Um, yeah, but, I, that but like I, yes. Oh, go ahead. Uh, just to just let I hear, I hear a lot of this that uh, fighting one on one fighter games have a big preference toward special, very specialized controllers. Oh sure, yeah. sure, yeah, and and, and it's understandable um, because it, you know, it, like timing and and preferences matter uh, in in fighting games. I'm not as hardcore into fighting games. I have a couple that I like to play every once in a while. And I usually like to play them with a friend, but um, I'm not hardcore into them. I don't practice them. Uh, I never get good enough to be in any kind of tournament level or anything like that. But um, I really like using a joystick for shmups. I love shmups. Um, I, I play them a lot, and I, I really enjoy playing playing games with them. Apparently, there there are a couple mods that you can do to to um, you, you you can get like a tighter spring. And a larger actuator uh, for for shmups, and apparently it's a lot. It makes it a lot better. So I'm I'm looking forward to that because one of the complaints I have about my stick is when when you move the actual joystick, it, it there's a little bit of too much space in between when you move it left. Um, like you have to move it more left than you should for twitch movements. Um, like before it actually like hits the contact uh so the larger actuator will actually um mitigate that it'll hmm. allow me to um you know switch direction much quicker yeah so. you know, i i dig that part i remember times when old times where we used to play racing games and sometimes the uh i think it was plant of death that does not allow both players to play keyboard so someone always had to stuck with the joystick and yeah, racing yeah. with joystick is sucks. Oh no, no. For 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 a racing game you either want a controller or you want a racing wheel. And uh, a really good racing wheel. It'd have to be yeah, like a uh, real back then we didn't have barely had budget for games. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um I mean, there there was even a point in time when I played fighter uh, fighting games with a keyboard, and that's just terrible. Uh, yeah, that's how I that's how I always did it. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's it's I can't stand. I it. used to play Little Fighter as well with keyboard. Uh, little sh Fighter, I remember that. Shmups are are actually pretty good with the keyboard because when you press left, it means left. You know what I mean? Like there's there's no mm. delay, uh, like with. With the uh, also D pads are really good for shmups as mouse. well. So, um, eh, there's only a couple gate uh, shmups that use the mouse. Uh, like I can only think of one right off the top of my head, and that's Tyrion and uh, uh, Jamestown. Those those there, are the two that I know of. There's a game, flash game called Frantic Two. I would recommend looking oh, well, into. Well, it's flash game. It's flash oh, it's game. a pretty it's good. Game. It's a pretty good blood hell. Oh, I'm sure it's good, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm saying like, you know, like programs, mo mo most EXE games, you know, um, don't, don't use the, the, uh, the mouse, the mouse as a, as a control method. Mm. Um, but that it is a good way to play shmups, but it, the game has to be built around it. I feel, mm. um, because it gives you an unfair advantage. Um, like it makes a game really easy if you can actually use the, uh, the mouse as a control method. Uh, the game has to be built around the fact that you can use the mouse. Um, so I, I, I would say that your mileage may vary on that. <laughs> yeah, well, one, maybe the, I've seen some games where you have to move with the keyboard and aim with the mouse. So that's an extra extra layer of, oh shit. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, um, 
uh, that, that's pretty much all I, I wanted to say about these topics tonight. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any final remarks here. Mm -hmm. uh, Good luck finding the... Give us all of your fucking save slots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did not want to say anything on that part, segment, segment because to me this is a very, very old rhetoric. Like, I mean, it, it is, but like, it's still happening. No, I mean, I... Somebody's an idiot. <laughs> I'm just meaning that this is the something we st talk about for ages on back on the layer of the Croco Squirrel. So, oh, I gosh, yeah. Like this is what yeah. we do. Like we are, we are the mini gym, mini, mi we are the mini gym inquisitors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Well, uh, that is the show for this week. Uh, please remember to subscribe to Corrective Consciousness's YouTube and SoundCloud pages. Well. There, please give us thumbs ups, likes, and five star ratings on our iTunes. It helps us promote and spread awareness of the show, and any bit of encouragement helps keep the show going. You can also catch us on Tuesday for our sister podcast, Corrective Consciousness, the podcast about our lives and pop culture. Finally, you can friend me as Vise the Bold on Steam, PSN, Xbox Live, Twitter, and Battle.net. And you can follow me on my YouTube channel, Lotus Prince. You can hit me up on Twitter at, at Lotus Prince. And finally, if you are interested in seeing videos early, getting in on exclusive live streams, or even selecting upcoming games for me to Let's Play, then perhaps consider swinging by my Patreon account, which can be found at patreon.com slash Lotus Prince. And you can find me on Skype, on Discord, on the Lair of the Crocos Squirrel, and occasionally on Steam. All right, All right guys. We'll, we will catch you on Tuesday. Until next time, everyone. Adieu.